know, they say a picture, you know, is it, better than a thousand words, man. Yeah. When you can actually look at it, you know, look at something, you can see it. You know, actually, me and my director, uh, we actually uh, walked walked by a brother right here on this corner one day, and the brother was standing out here crying, right? And we asked, we stopped asking, brother, you all right? And he was like, he was borderline suicidal. You know, he, you know, he was, he was frustrated about being unemployed. He had a drug problem, you know, and, 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 he, and he was frustrated, right? And then he wanted to know who we were, and we actually started talking to him. And we got him to actually start to walk with us from here to Barnett, which is another strip, right? But uh, when you get to this light, you're going to make a left. My name is William T. Lawson, and I am a, a resident of the, of the District of Columbia. I grew up in the southeast uh, quadrant of, 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 of Washington, D.C. Today is my five-year, three-month, and 18-day days of deliverance from behind the wall. This is my area here. I used to run this area back in the day right here. See, this used, it used to be projects over here. We can ride by some more townhouses, but they, they, they used to be projects. Yeah, we used to do our dirt, and when the DC police would come after us, we would run across the street to Maryland. That's the Maryland side. This Mason Dixon, remember? Southern Avenue. That side is Maryland. Slow down. I used to live right there. Right there. There were seven of us in my, in my household. I'm like the uh, fourth person, the fourth kid out of seven. The only thing that was taken care of was, the, you know, what was the bare necessities. Because my father, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a, 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 a real educated man. But he worked, you know, he, he was an honest man, though. And then the project that, that we lived in, it wasn't, it wasn't all that glamorous. See, this is, this is the project. This is, this is the heights. They call it the heights. See all them, look, all the stuff boarded up. And, and we were bored. And all we would do was sit around, you know, in the community and just try to figure out stuff to do. I never actually w wanted to work because I was told when I was younger that, uh, you know, I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't gonna be nothing no way. See, because short of them out here, they huff. Actually, this is you strip strip that, I know they are. I had a desire to want to ride a bike. I didn't have a bike. I seen a bike. I wanted what I wanted, you know. And I didn't think about, you know, uh, cause and effect, right? That, you know, like for, for every action, there's going to be a reaction. These guys are out here hustling right now. You can buy anything from cigarettes to hair around. Anything you want. Yep. I started out drinking beer. Then I started drinking wine. Then it went from wine to alcohol, to you know, to liquor, right? Because during the time that you are high, you don't think about the cares of the world or the problems that you have, right? You just having fun. They don't have much hope for the future, and they don't see no sense in going to school because they don't think they're going to mount to nothing. They rather hang out on the corner, drink beer, drink wine, like I was telling you I used to do. You know, because you, I, you didn't have the foresight to want to even want more. In my drug-induced state, I was so much of a coward to where, you know, I had to, I wanted to get high. I didn't have no money. And I convinced both of y'all to give me a ride. And I pulled a gun out and tell you, now give me your money. Now that I got your money, now I'm looking at you and I'm saying, you know what? Y'all look like the type of dudes, man. Y'all gonna go get a gun. Y'all coming back after me. So I figured like this here, well, you know what? If I just shoot these two, I ain't got a word no more. When we walk, this is what we have on us, right? And you see what, see what it says, William T. Lawson, community change agent. And what is a community change agent? A community change agent is an individual who actually take pride in trying to bring, you know, some, some uh, positive elements in, into, their in, into the community at large. A lot of times I used to go to my case managers and. It was their consensus that, you know, I was a lost cause and that I wouldn't leave the jail unless, it, unless I was in a black bag. The majority of all of the members of the National Homecoming Academy are ex-offenders. 
the individuals that have been to jail and come on from jail, we're gonna make a right right here. And see, this is the what this is the exact route that we walk. You know, I didn't know that I was gonna be a community change agent, but I knew once I got home and that's when I actually started walking in some of the communities and I started seeing some of these kids, I was seeing snapshots of myself yesterday. If I'm gonna leave this job in the black in the black bag, then I ain't no sense in me uh going straight, flying straight, right? Everybody is more used to complaining, talking about what's not right, what need to be done. Well, we've taken the, taken the approach that, you know, rather than to complain about it, we get up and do something about it. My director mapped out a, uh, a route that the kids use to go to school. You know, and as we meet people, we meet and greet people, you know. You know, providing a kind word as well as a positive male presence. And the walk actually, we actually covered three elementary schools. Solitary can find, sometimes the solitude can, can help drive you crazy. If you don't have much, right? And if you think that, that you're alone, and they be locked in there by themselves and they get to talking. But don't nobody care about me. Why should I care about myself? I actually know a couple of people who have hung themselves. I'm telling you, man, I got stories. Man, I got stories, man. I used to make pizzas. On one layer of a tortilla, I put jalapeno. This was a vibrant uh, uh, community garden that we created. Spread it around. Put another layer down. And the idea was we was going to grow uh, vegetables and, and uh, herbs and stuff here. Then put cheddar. Put it down. We had a sunflower seed project. Where, where they harvest the sunflower seeds and then they, they actually sow them. Tomato paste, and then like we had tomatoes. I could get the vegetables to put on it. They had like uh, squash, beets, bell peppers, onions, uh, cucumbers, peppers. Put them in the microwave three minutes and cook them. Good as I don't know what, man. I used to make 20 of them every Sunday, $200, and, and it paid for a drug habit. There are several ways you can get drugs in the jail. You can get drugs in the jail through, uh, through visits, as well as, you know, uh, uh, staff. Let's be real, right? They're human beings too, and everybody got issues. I actually uh, went up for parole three times. The third time ended up being the charm for me. Once you get to that point where you, where, you, where you make the declaration that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want change, and instead of sitting around and, and, and wait for change, you get up and you do something to bring about a change. They gave me $100 cash. I had, I had one box of property I took out with me. They gave me a bus ticket, right? I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. And I got to the front door. I looked out the door before I stepped out there because I had always been on one side of the wall for so long. On this other side of the wall, I'm free. So I just looked out and looked around. And what I seen was a parking lot full of cars, right? This picture, this is, when I first came home, this was like our first family outing together where we took a family picture for the house. And this is a collection of myself, all of my nieces, my nieces, my nephews, my, my daughter, my grandkids my father, my stepmom, the whole family. And so my sister has kept me under her wing. If it don't be for my sister, I probably would have been back in the streets a long time ago. I told y'all in the early going that the lure of the streets have been calling me. They've been calling me ever since July the 22nd of 2009. So hard for me to, to be gainfully employed is because every time, you know, I fill out an application, I fill out an application and, and there's a question on the application that says, have you ever been convicted of a felony before? I talk a lot about me being a changed individual, right? And I am a changed individual, right? I've been through a lot in my life, right? And, you know, I've left, left a lot of stuff behind me, but what I come to find out is every time I fill out an application, the stuff comes right back up. Because I have people tell me, so, well, man, you know, I have a friend that's going to help you get a job. I've been told this a thousand times since I've been home. I've been waiting five years. I want it bad, but I don't want it so bad to the degree where I'm gonna say, well, it ain't happened fast enough, so let me go to the streets and get it from the muscle. 
I got a lot of buddies who, who actually tried that. After they did their time, they came home, they tried to do it the same way that I'm, that I'm doing it today, but they got tired of all of the obstacles. And it's so, it's kind of like my back is against this wall. And you know, once your back get, get, get against the wall, you ain't got but one way to go. You can't go this way, okay? So I gotta come this, I gotta come straight at you. People gotta eat. And that's why the guys go back to hustling, man. Then they go back to jail and they tell the same stories over and over and over again. I wish that other people would just respect the fact that, you know, that I am human, right? The biggest challenge for me is the limitations that I have assigned to me because of my past. I can understand why some people would fear me, especially if all they knew were the negative things that I did in my life over 30 years ago. But if you was to uh, know what I've been doing for the last five years with my life, and you know, I, you know, I, I, I actually care now, I, and I care about the community, and I care about younger people because once upon a time I was young, right? And when I was young, no one actually reached out and tried to help me. So I'm compelled today to actually reach out and try to bring about a positive change. You got to remember our slogan, nothing for us without us, right? If we don't get up and start doing something, then ain't nothing going to happen, right? Yeah, I, I was able to uh, work, save up money, and I bought my own car. It's not a new car, it's an old car, but it gets me here. You see what I'm saying? Right now, I'm, I'm like, Close to empty, but as soon as I leave here, I'm going to, well, once I get back on the other side, I'm going to one of them, one of them gas stations and I'm going to put $30, I'm putting it in my tank because I need it, you know. That's my truth, man, you know.